let's say we had to add five sevenths and 25 50 seconds and seven fourths. Now, you may have been thinking up till now, this has been a whole lot of fuss to do some pretty simple stuff. But when we are combining fractions as big and complicated as this, well, our techniques are going to prove very useful. We're going to look for the lowest common multiple for the numbers and the denominators. That is to say, the smallest number into which all three of them will evenly divide. Now, seven is already a prime number. The first few prime numbers were two, three, five, seven, 11, and seven is certainly one of them. So let's put that on our grid. Now, the prime factor seven I'm gonna put over here. I'm leaving plenty of room because when I prime factor the other two, I'm going to want to assemble their prime factors in ascending order. So leaving room will allow me to do that. So now let's prime factor 52. Well, we know that 52 is an even number, so two is obviously going to work. So when we put two into 52, well, two into 52, two goes into five twice. That'll give us a four there, bring down the one, and bring down the two. Two goes into 12 six times, that'll give us 12 and no remainder. So 2 goes into 52 26 times and 2 goes into 26. Well, 2 into 26. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 there. Bring down the 0. Bring down the 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times. So the 2 goes into 26 13 times. Now let's clear a little space. So 52 factors into two, and another two, and a 13. Before we go on to factoring four, perhaps we should have a closer look at 13. Two doesn't divide evenly into 13. Neither does three, or five, or seven, or 11. In fact, 13 is the next prime number in sequence. So 13 is another prime. That's why we're putting it up here in our list of prime factors. Now 4 is 2 times 2, so we needn't really even write out the prime factoring. That one's pretty obvious. 4 is 2 times 2, and here we've got all our prime factors. The biggest appearance of 2 is 2 times 2. It appears twice, but in both cases it never gets higher than 2 times 2, so that'll be 2 times 2. Then 7's biggest appearance is just once as 7, and 13's biggest appearance is just as 13. And if you put those in your calculator, you're going to find that 2 times 2 times 7 times 13 is going to end up being 364. So we're going to want to make 364 the denominator of all of these fractions. To make that happen for 5 sevenths, well, we know that 364 is made when we multiply 7 by 2 times 2 times 13, and 2 times 2 times 13, if you put it in your calculator, is going to end up being 52. So we're going to multiply this one by 52 50 seconds, and that's going to, you're going to want to use your calculator for this, or it's going to take quite a while. That's going to give you 260 360 fourths, and for 25 50 seconds, well, 52 you get when you multiply 2 times 2 times 13, as we can see from this row in our prime factoring grid. So 2 times 2 times 13 are taken care of already. They're already built into 52. What's missing is the 7. So we're going to multiply this one by 7 over 7. And this is going to give you 52 times 7 will give you 364 in the denominator. And 25 times 7 is 175. Again, you're going to want to use your calculator to arrive at these results. Then finally, 7 fourths 
We're going to multiply that by some sort of a fraction to turn that into something in 364 ths, 364. So we see here that 2 times 2, that's 4, times 7 times 13 is going to give us 364. And 7 times 13 will turn out to be 91. So we're going to multiply this whole business by 91 91sts, and that's going to give us 637. Now, when we add them all together, our 260 plus 175 plus 637, all of them over 364, the total is going to be 1,000. 72 over 364. And if we wanted to simplify that, and obviously we can because they're both even numbers, we divide the top and the, and the bottom by 2, and if we did that a couple of times, we would find that the fraction reduced to 268 over 91.